Hello, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, it's your buddy, Mr. G. Today, we are going to talk about an introduction to Photoshop. So we're going to get ourselves going here. We're in our Google Classroom right now. We've got some images we want to work with. But first, we've got to talk about Photoshop and what it does. i got some fans going. I apologize for the background noise here. So let's go ahead and jump over here to Photoshop. So when you first launch Photoshop, you're going to get this screen right here. Here I've got some stuff I've worked on in the beginning. If you're just starting, you won't have anything there. You'll have some learning tabs up here and have some tutorials to help you start. But right up here, we're going to go right here where it says create new. We're just going to jump in and create a new document. So let's go ahead and click that create new. As soon as you hit that, it's going to bring up a new window. It's going to bring you up the new document window here. Okay. And we've got some presets here, some ones that you already made. If you haven't made any, you'll probably just have some presets or it might be blank. But we're going to go over here and set our new images, okay? Preset details. First thing we can do, we can give it a name. Let's call this practice. Let's go practice is the name of our document here. And we've got some width, height, and what we want. Let's go ahead and change this to inches. Let's go ahead and make inches. And let's make an image that is 8 inches wide, and we'll make it 10 inches high. Now, we have some options here. We can make this either a portrait mode or a landscape mode. You can see that it just switches back and forth. Artboards, we're not going to talk about right now. Uh, resolution. Resolution is going to be how many pixels are in a little bitty square on every inch of surface on our program. Okay, so we're going to head set this to 300. We're going to leave that at pixels per inch. So pixels per inch, dots per inch, resolution, they're all referring to the same thing. Most of the things we're going to do in this class are all going to be just set to 300 DPI or 300 pixels per inch. Okay. Color mode. There's two basic color modes. We've got a whole bunch of different ones in here, but the two main ones are RGB, which is screens for like your computer, your cell phone, and so on. And then CMYK is for print, uh, for printing out on new magazines or for banners and posters and so on and so forth. Okay. So we're just going to leave this on RGB for right now. Background. You can have your background anything you want. You can do a custom here. You can have a white. You can have a black. You can get a custom color. Say if we wanted to have a red background, we could choose a red background. But today we're just going to leave that white and color profile and pixel aspect. We're not going to mess around with that. We'll go ahead and hit create. So now we've got our new document. Let's talk about the Photoshop interface here. We have our main area here is called the document area okay so we see our 8 by 10 image here that we just made with a white background right down here we also have some information that's the uh information bar i can click on it it'll tell me there's that width 2400 pixels by 8 inches by 10 inches we did rgb color the resolution is 300 okay now over here on our left-hand side of the screen, you will see our menu bar. This is what's called the menu bar. These are all the different tools that we can use in Photoshop to manipulate our images, okay? Up here at the top, we've got, it's called the options bar. This options, as we change through our different tools, you'll see those options change, okay? Up at the very top, you'll see the menu bar. The menu bar has got some familiar things like file and edit and window and help and all those kind of things we would think of. And then over here on the far right, we have what are called palettes. So these palettes are adjustable and we can move them around and we'll talk more about those later. But right now, we're just going to leave them and identify them over there. Okay, so I've got our layers panel right here, too. All right, so. Let's talk about tools first. Toolbar, okay? As I move through my toolbar, you'll see my cursor changes to reflect what tool I have in my hand. And again, as I change tools, the options for those tools change in the option bar. And as I go through those tools, the cursor changes to reflect what I have selected from the toolbar. I like to call this like what is in our hand. So when I select a tool, toolbar tells us what is in our hand, what tools in our hand, and the option bar tells us what we can do with that tool. Okay. So also I want to point out when you hold over any individual tool, you'll get this little pop-up, right? So this says move tool. It's got a little symbol for the letter V, which is going to be the keyboard shortcut to launch that tool. Okay. 
So right now I have the eyedropper tool. So if I hold here and I hit the letter V on my keyboard, it changes to the move tool and you can see that the move tool is now highlighted. All right, now in addition, you also see that when I hold over there, I'll get this little animation, this little video here that also tells me and shows me what exactly it does. And it's also written out. The move tool moves a selection or a layer. If I have more questions, I can click that and it'll send me through more information. Okay, but you can see as I hold over there, there's one. So if I go to the eyedropper tool, it has a tutorial. So some of these will have tutorials. So the eyedropper tool, the keyboard shortcut is the letter I. And if I click sam samples colors from an image, and right over here, if I click this learn how, it'll take me to a tutorial and tell me more about it. Okay, but for right now, we're just going to stick with a few tools. Okay, so let's go to our move tool here. Okay, and I want you to make sure that you have up here in our option bar, you have a couple options. You've got the option to show transformation controls. I want to make sure that you have that clicked, and I'll tell you why here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and put something into our image so that we can use it. Okay, let's go back over here to our Google Classroom. And I want to click on images, and I want to click on this picture of this astronaut. Let's get this astronaut. She's right there. And we are going to right-click on that, and we're going to click Save Image As. And once we do that, that's going to bring us up another window that says we can put this into, we can download it. So I'm going to put it right into my downloads file. I'm not going to change it. If I want to change the name, I can, but I'm just going to leave it in downloads. It's a JPEG image, and I'm going to go ahead and push Save. Okay. I've already got that, so I'm replacing it down there. So I'm going to go ahead, and now I'm going to go back to Photoshop. Now I am going to go to File and Place. And in my downloads folder, I'm just going to look for that image of that astronaut. There she is. So I'm going to go ahead and push place. That places my astronaut in there. Okay. As soon as I place my astronaut in here, I'll notice that it has this blue box around it with an X through the middle of it. Okay. What that is called is called a bounding box. As I place that in there, I can do a few things. I can resize my astronaut. I can resize it vertically and horizontally. You'll see that it is fixed. I can also move it. If I move just outside the corner, you'll see my cursor changes from an arrow to a curved arrow. That means I can rotate my astronaut. And then once I get her where I want her, I can hit this check mark key up here, my options key, or I can hit the return key. Either one will place my astronaut in there. All right, so now that I've got my astronaut in there, I can do some different things. You see, I can, with the move tool, I can move it around. If I want to continue to resize, I can resize again. I want to rotate some more, I can rotate. And when I'm done with my transformation, transformation is just what Photoshop calls anytime you change the size or scale or placement of the image. So we have to commit that. So we hit the return key or hit that check mark up in the options bar, and we can move those around. Let me show you one other way that we can bring our image in. I can also go down here just go down to my command bar and I can just open up my downloads and I can find my astronaut right there's that file and I can also just drag it into my image and it'll place it again so now I have two astronauts and again brings that bounding box up I can resize it I can move it around I can rotate my image however I like and I push return to commit that image. All right, so let's look at a couple more tools here. So we talked about the move tool. We move things around with the move tool. Next tool I want to talk about is our magnifying glass tool. Magnifying glass is the zoom tool. Street keyboard shortcut is Z. So if you go over here, we just hit the letter Z on our keyboard. It's going to bring up a magnifying glass, okay? And you'll see that I can magnify 
and I can go way in. I can go way, 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 and I can go all the way down to the pixel. Now, if I hold down my option key, which is right two keys next to my space bar, it'll give me the option instead of magnifying in, it'll magnify out. And I can go all the way back out. So let's go back in on either one of your astronauts again. And the last tool we're going to talk about is our hand tool, which is hidden underneath the rotate view tool, which I had open, but it's right here. Shortcut is H. So I can either click it and then I can move that around. One thing about our toolbars, I did not tell you that some tools are hidden. You see these tools with the tiny little corners in them? That means in that drawer, there are a few others. So like on the marquee tool, if I hold down, there's also a rectangle, an elliptical, a single, and a column one. Um, on the lasso tool I hold down, there's a few options there. But like I said, on our hand tool, we've got the rotate, and we've got the regular hand tool that we can move things around. Now, when you click and drag with the hand tool, you can see that we move things around. So if I want to work on a specific area, I get my hand tool and I can move it around. You can also, let's get hit the letter Z to zoom. We'll hold down the option key and we'll zoom out a little bit. You can also use your space bar and hold it down to use to move your hand tool around too. And I let go. And I've got my image where I can zoom in and out again. All right, last quick key I want to show you is hit command, which is right to the left or right of your space bar. Hit command and the number zero. That is to return to full view, fit to screen. Okay, again, that's command zero. So anywhere you are, so if you get lost, you can always hit command and zero and return to view, full view. All right, so we're going to stop right there. We learned about our work area and our document area, our toolbars, our option bar, our menu bar, palettes, and we learned a couple ways to place images into our image by going to saving image ads into our downloads and then placing an image. And we also can pull it straight and just drag it into Photoshop to place that image. And we learned how to move, resize, and rotate with the move tool. We learned how to zoom in with the magnifying glass, and we learned how to move our entire image around with the hand tool. So we'll stop there today. Stay creative and I will see you tomorrow.